Good evening. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. I'm going to read a little bit of the Christmas story tonight. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city in Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was, also, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And, you know, I've talked a lot about this story with the kids downstairs, and it's so easy for us to just think of these as characters. But these were people. Yeah. These were people in a time where when a young woman became pregnant out of, out of marriage, her life was over. She could be taken out in stone. She could be exiled. She could be cast out from her family. Mary risked it all because she believed when an angel came and told her what was to be. She believed in her heart. And I think sometimes God asks us to believe things that seem impossible. But our response will hopefully be the same as Mary's. Be it unto me according to your word. And I know that that's always been my heart desire. Lord, I don't have to understand it. I don't have to know how it's going to happen. But be, let it be according to your word. May it come to pass. And not only did Mary have to believe, but her husband her spouse, Joseph, how troubled was he? This had never happened before. They didn't, I mean, you know, <laughs> we joke about immaculate conception, but this is a thing that no one, I mean, the, if, unless they were studied in the scriptures and saw the prophecy, this didn't make any sense. Um, let's see. And uh, let's go to Matthew. Let's see. Now the birth of Jesus was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Not to marry her, but to put her away. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took him took unto him his wife, and knew her not, till she was brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Yeah. Now, what I've always found interesting in the Old Testament is the bloodline, right? The name, the bloodline goes through the male. Jesus was through the line of David, through his father, not his mother. But he still is through the line of David, through Joseph. Right. Joseph had to have great faith. These two young people, they, they couldn't have been very old. But they were the ones that God chose because he knew they would believe and that they would trust in the Lord's plan. And so as we think about this Christmas, I, I, I keep hearing our God is the God of the impossible. And I want all of us to believe that in 2017, our God, our God of the impossible, 
is going to tell us, with me, nothing is impossible. With our God, nothing is impossible. Amen. And that means that he may require great faith from us. He may require us to trust him in things that don't make any sense, something that's never happened before. But if we can agree together that our God loves to do the foolish to confound the wise, that's his favorite way to do it. Doesn't make any sense. Donald Trump is our president, doesn't make any sense, but God can anoint him and God can use him. You know, these things that don't make sense that the world goes, what on earth? That's when God can come in and he gets the glory. Amen. You know, and so I just look and expect impossible from God. The impossible, beyond what we can think or imagine. And let our heart be just like Mary and Joseph, who we rise up, we have a dream, we rise up and we do it. An angel comes, we have, we have a thought, we have, a, we have, we have a, a knowing in our hearts that God has spoken to us. Let it be so according to your word, Lord. Let it be so according to your word. As we agree together for nothing but health, nothing but prosperity, nothing but reconciliation and restoration for all of the body of Christ in 2017. In Jesus' name. Amen. Any, uh, anybody have anything to share tonight? Any prayer requests? Yeah, Roberto. Uh, when you were speaking, how God is, is the God of the impossible, um, you know, I keep thinking about all these people that don't know who he is. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, deny his existence and, and things like that. As you were saying that I was thinking the reason why uh, they don't get it is because they do not understand who he is. <coughs> and there's a lot of people that use the argument that if God is so good, why there's poverty and people die of diseases and all of these things and, and whatnot. Uh, and it's, it's, it's because, it's not because he's allowing that to happen because none of that comes from him. All that stuff is man-made or it's a result of this world that we live in, this, mm -hmm. this fallen world mm -hmm. because of what Adam and Eve did. But if there's one thing that I understand very clearly is that he is not going to mess with your free will. Right. He'll try to persuade you, <clears throat> but he's not going to take that away from you because that right. goes against his nature. Right. You know, and that's that's we're given the choice to do the things that, that we choose to do <coughs> follow him and, and understand those things. But all those things that we know here, the people here in this room, it's because they have been revealed to us mm -hmm. through the Holy Spirit. Right. And that's something that the people that uh, deny God's existence or use the argument, well, he's so good, why is this happening, all that, is because they don't understand that because until they get to the point that they say, okay, God, I'm here. And if they want to say if you're exist and all this stuff and whatnot, just tell me, explain things to me. When, when that door is open, you know, the Holy Spirit's going to get a hold of them and they're going to have that understanding. Mm -hmm. And that's when we're going to start seeing all this, this changes. So I was thinking about that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because of all the things that are happening in the world and all that. Uh, but on a separate note, uh, I'm very thankful for the family and friends that I have. Uh, and I appreciate all the, the, birthday wishes that I received yesterday and, and and I'm very appreciative but if there's one thing that I'm very happy and excited for is is the person that God chose for me. Right. And he hit it out of the park with Kelly. <laughs> she she is unbelievable, amazing. She went above and beyond yesterday and the night before all the things that she did for me just so that I could enjoy my birthday. And the things that she planned, none of it I was expecting. And and it was very it was a very nice feeling knowing that there is this person that loves you that much. Uh, so I'm thankful that that she's in my life and that she decided <coughs> to accept my marriage proposal when I did. <laughs> uh, and I also asked for prayer for doors to open. I recently applied to a new position that I think is gonna allow us to fulfill some plans that we have. We both know the direction that we want 
our marriage and our household to go. Uh, you know, if God wants us to go in a different direction, we'll, we'll listen to that. But right now we feel this is the direction we need to go. And if I were to get this, this new job, I think it's going to allow us to accomplish some things much quicker. Uh, and we'll be able to do other things as a result of that and, and be able to, to at least in, in a way be a blessing to others. So if, if for those doors to open for continued wisdom and revelation and for God's grace to continue to be poured over my <coughs> household. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Let's pray that they come. Well, we'll just pray that God brings the people that are part of his body and right. encourage those that are to be able to come whenever they can. We'll just pray that God will bring the right people here and that the people that are missing, that we pray for them, that they'll have a desire to be here and, and come whenever they can. Just pray. That's all we can do is pray and, and encourage those who aren't here, reach out to them.
just listen. We just try to give back. And as that said, just um, I've had family issues happening, so I've had to ask the people that are living with me to move. And right now they have absolutely no place to go. But I don't have any extra room in my house. And so just pray that somehow between now and tomorrow morning <laughs> that the Lord will open up something for them. Amen. text from Cindy yesterday afternoon at 4.30 uh, frantically saying uh, can you come and get me I can't breathe um, I knew what was going on uh, driving home uh, Lord was trying to keep me focused uh, <clears throat> on what he's trying to accomplish instead of what the enemy's trying to distract with so we got there and, and uh, it looked like a Friday night in the summertime up at Mercy Emergency Room, it was packed. I mean, it was packed. There was probably 40 people in there. Hmm. And it took us almost two hours, mm -hmm. two and a half hours to get into the emergency room itself. Um, <clears throat> we had a piece about it and stuff, and Cindy was maintaining uh, her oxygen levels and dropping down to 87 at home. And minimum is 90. Mm -hmm. uh, anything below 90 can get critical. But anyway, she, uh, she got in. About 7.30, 8 o'clock, got in and they started uh, doing this and that and everything else and give her steroids and, and, and uh, taking blood samples and everything else like that. And it all stemmed from when she had the oral surgery a week ago Tuesday. Uh, she didn't tell me for two and a half days that she hadn't been able to swallow her medication for her uh, breathing situation. Well, her system got all out of whack and, and uh, Cindy Envy tried to take advantage of it work on it. Make a long story short, <clears throat> as the night progressed, the Lord uh, reminded me of uh, the way the enemy tries to work. And, and, and the, thing, the visual that comes to mind is when uh, Hitler tried to take uh, Stalingrad and other places over there, he always used the pincer moves. And if you watch the pincer moves, he always goes around the sides and causes distractions off to of the sides and then he shoots on in. He says, this is what's going on. He says, you're not supposed to look to the left and to the right. You're supposed to look straight toward the mark. So <clears throat> as he was being at my right hand and my left hand, guarding those, uh, guarding off those distractions, um, I was praying in tongues. Everybody finally left the room. I had two uh, stepdaughters there and four grandkids there. and uh, They were all out of the room at that point in time. They'd gone home because it was a couple more hours later. And it was about 10.30. I was watching the monitor and her oxygen level was leveling out. Originally it was 94 at the hospital. And I, Lord, I said, Lord, I know you're here. I know you're in this room. I know your spirit's within us. And I know you're going to start working. Anyway, at that point I looked up at the monitor. It was at 96. And this was her oxygen level. And I says, um, just, just release what you want to do. I said, Lord, purify my hands. Just let it go. Anyway, within the next 25, 30 minutes I watched it jump from 96 to 97. To 98, it just started manifesting on the monitor. I, I have a picture of the 98, 7 and 98 on my phone. I wish I would have been able to display it. Anyway, it's uh, his hand was on it, and I heard the wheezing was dissipating from her lungs at the same time. Uh, the nurse came in to check on her, see how she was doing, because they were getting ready to admit her, which would have been a three-day stay. And <clears throat> she came in to check her and stuff like that, and she just kind of did the double take, like you know. What's going on? I says, is her breathing level acceptable, what you're seeing on the monitor? She says, yeah. So I listened to her lungs, and she says, your lungs are clearing up. So I just 
praise God, you know, praise God, praise God. Yeah. In the meantime, I just kept leaning on him, just leaning on him. And uh, and uh, Shaylee, our granddaughter, she texts me and she goes, how's grandma doing, you know, stuff like that. I said, she may get to go home. She goes, what? I said, just wait a little bit. Because she, she, she's very, very close to Cindy. And uh, in fact, the last two times she was in the hospital, she stayed for three days with her in the hospital. She, had to, she wouldn't leave her side. Anyway, um, while we were out in the waiting room, there was an older guy and an older lady out there and stuff like that and uh, in conversation with him, just understanding the surroundings that would go on. Uh, apparently this woman hadn't been able to relieve herself in the restrooms for four days. Um, and everybody was getting taken in to get looked at and they kept bypassing her. And, and I was like, what's going on here? You know, the, the priorities are sideways or something. They don't, I don't know if they don't, how to do their triage or whatever they want to call it. But anyway, <clears throat> they wound up in the room next to us and stuff. And I stepped outside for a minute. And uh, when they were checking Cindy over, and he comes walking out of, the, out of the room. And he asked, well, how's your wife doing? I says, I, I believe she's being healed right now in the room and stuff like that. So I got to the minister, and his name is Homer. His wife is Kathy. And uh, I believe I got the name, his name right. And uh, apparently she's been taking Tylenol most of her life uh, every day, which is apparently not a good thing because it destroys her liver. So mm -hmm. it's destroyed her liver, and they're getting ready to take her to ICU. And they said that she was, uh, it was terminal because her kidneys were shutting down, et cetera, and stuff. So I got to let him understand what the Lord is doing yeah, with Cindy and stuff like that, and I said, she can be healed. Your wife can be healed. I didn't, I, w I wanted to go in and actually pray for this woman, but I had to take care of my wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm saying, okay, Lord, just release what you want to release. Lord, which one to release? And the next thing I know, this guy's going back into the room, and I pray to God that he went and started praying for her to release the healing on her. Yeah. So I don't know. So there's multiple things happening on, anyway, um, as the nurses were coming in and stuff like that, they, they, did her blood analysis and everything looked pretty fair. She was a little low on potassium because she hadn't been eating solid food. She's been on liquids. So they gave her potassium and stuff like that. And, and uh, the, then the doctor came in and says, uh, well, how do you feel? She says, I don't feel too bad. She, she says, you, your numbers look good and your lungs sound good. If, if you want to uh, go home, we'll do one more breathing treatment and we'll send you home. Well, Needless to say, something that the enemy tried to cause for a, a three-day stay at the hospital, we got to go home right around midnight, and uh, I just thank God for that. And in, in the midst of it, I'm thinking, if I got to stay home, I'm going to have to postpone going to uh, my kids in North Carolina. And Cindy said, no, no matter what you're going, you're going, you're going. And I understand her heart in that, but I just couldn't <laughs> leave her, and even though my stepdaughters were going to step up and make sure she got taken care of. That's great. I love that. And, uh, but it, I knew I, it was my place was at her side, so I wasn't going to leave in that situation. So <clears throat> uh, I was texting my daughter. I was texting a bunch of you guys, and I, I really appreciate your prayers because those prayers, they, those prayers came into that room about 10:30 and just started manifesting all over the room. And people that walked in, even the nurse that worked with us, or the doctor she worked with us, um, she knew something was up. I, she didn't get it out in words, but I could just see it in her face, like I. Something's going on here that I don't understand. Yeah. They didn't teach me <laughs> at college. Okay. So we just leave that as a testimony uh, uh, for God's goodness. Yes. And uh, my daughter and I were understanding um, that this distraction, these pincer moves on the situation with Cindy, uh, was not the ultimate goal. This was just a distraction. So we, by the name of the Lord, took care of that distraction, pushed the enemy back off to the left or our right, and released that pincer move and basically broke the pincers, mm -hmm. as, as it would be. So she did get home. Uh, she was able to spend the day at home. Uh, she's doing fair. Her levels are sitting around 95, uh, unless she gets up and goes around and do a bunch of stuff, which I try to keep her not doing. She just won't sit on, you know, anyway. <laughs> but just continue to pray for her. Uh, my daughter and I were talking. And, uh, and uh, she understands this will be the first unhindered time with my two older children uh, since 1989. Wow. 
there'll be no external interference saying, you know, you got to be have the kids back home, yada, yada, yada. yada. Uh, you can only have them for three hours. You know, this, this is your visitation time or all that stuff is out of the way. This will be the first free time since 1989. I'll be able to have free time with my children. I just praise God for that. Years of prayer, a lot of brothers and sisters have prayed through this situation. And the enemy is ticked off because not only will I get restored to them, but I'm also going into the enemy's camp to reclaim my younger two kids at the same time. So Amen. I give them all the glory. Amen. 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 Amen.
suffering with dementia, mm -hmm. so Marty's having a real hard time with that. At the same time, Mark, <clears throat> these kids were all in our church, grew up together. Um, always, he had a vertebrae that was missing in his neck, and he's always had trouble with his neck. Um, he's now 50-something years old, and the Lord has kept him this far. He did construction all of his life. He was a drummer at our church, just really loved God. But all this has kind of caused chaos in his life and his children. Um, now he's going through this vertebrae. They told him that if he doesn't get it fixed, he's going to be totally paralyzed, unable to walk, unable to talk. Um, has two small, two, two teenage kids still at home that he's responsible for. Um, so if he does have the surgery and the rod put in, they learn there's a 50-50 chance they could kill him. So he's just really distraught as mm -hmm. to what to do. He says, you know, the Lord's kept me for 50 years. I think I just need to continue to believe that the Lord's going to keep me and I don't have to have this and I won't become paralyzed or unable to speak. And so just remember that whole Berger family, just Amen. their names, if you would, please. Amen. Stand up, yeah, Mike. Oh, for um, speaking of Peter's, uh, our small, smaller puppy, uh, Dusty, I call him Dusty because he's so short. <coughs> um, he more iced out the other day, it wasn't Sunday. Um, he must have slipped or something because he's been limping around for mm -hmm. a couple days now. And uh, I checked him out, I didn't see any broken bones. And, and the enemy tried to come in immediately, but as soon as he was getting sick, uh, saying, Well, he or a tendon in his leg, and it's going to be six, seven hundred dollars to fix it, whatever else like that. And I prayed for him too, and I got him home today, and he's like 98% back to where he belongs. So, God, praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise <laughs> he cares. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So. All right. Anyone else? All right. Let's stand and go to the Lord tonight. All right. Heavenly Father, thank we you, just Jesus. come before you tonight. Praise we God. thank you, Lord, for everybody who joined us tonight. Thank, thank you. Blessings that you've poured out upon us, your provision, Lord. We thank you for the big and the small blessings, Lord. We lift up these needs to you tonight, Lord. For the Burger family, for Myron, Lord, for Cindy, Lord. Their needs, Lord, are great needs in this body, Lord. For Myron, Lord, for Alvin tomorrow. For Mike as he travels, Lord. We just take a minute and we lay these burdens at your feet. We lay and we cast our cares upon you, Lord. These are burdens, these are weights we were never meant to carry, Lord. And we trust you, Lord. We put our hope and our trust in you. We let it go, Lord, and we trust you. We trust in your goodness, Lord. We trust in your purpose for us. We trust in the, the, the path before us, Lord, that you have set before us. Where we know that you are good, Lord. We thank you for every blessing. And Lord, we cast our cares. We, we lay these burdens that we carry, that we want to do, and we want to fix, and we want to do it, and we want to make it all better. But we have to put it in your hands. For we know that you are the God of the impossible. Lord. There's only so much we can do. But your power, 
is unlimited. Your grace and your mercy know no boundaries. It's only how much will we believe, how much will we trust you. Open our minds, open our hearts to dream and to imagine. Open our ears to hear when you speak to us. Give us dreams and visions, Lord. Make the path before us. Light up the way. Let your word light up the way before us, Lord. That you, Your Lord. word says that your word is a lamp unto our feet. So light up the way, Lord. Light up the way that we just simply walk in it. It is our good pleasure to worship you, to come together, to cast our cares, to cast our burdens upon you. And when we do, we can worship you from a place of peace. We can worship you with our hearts overflowing with love and joy in the Holy Ghost. Our hearts are troubled when we see our brothers and sisters hurting, Lord. But what we can do most is to pray and to believe with them, to speak to the mountains and see them removed, to speak to the blind and see them open, those eyes open, Lord. You are the God of the impossible. And we believe that you can do all things. Have your way in the service tonight. Be with all those who are traveling for this holiday season. Bless the coming together of the families, of the joy that this season brings, the, of being together, Lord whether it's a long-awaited reunion or whether it's just another dinner with family, we thank you for the blessing that is family. We thank you that you're, for the provision that allows us the blessings of family. Let us find those and let us look for those who need a little something, Lord, this holiday season, whether a word, whether a dollar, whether food, whatever it may be. Let us be generous. Let us be generous as you are so generous with us. Let us give and let us pour out the blessings. Lord, we are blessed to be a blessing. And we thank you for every blessing, Lord. We know that you are the source of all things good. Be with us tonight. Have your way in this service, Lord. And we will give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. There's definitely something in the atmosphere tonight, so if anybody feels led to pray or to speak a word, if you want to come up and dance, if you want to run the aisles, there is liberty in this room tonight. There is freedom in this room tonight. There is joy and peace in this room tonight. So I encourage you to grasp it with both hands. In Jesus' name. Especially across the whole back of the room. Right, right, behind, right next to Sheila. Or right behind Tim and Lee. All, all along, yeah. right along there. Yeah. Over there with Jacob. Up the aisle there. I just, I can see, if I, if I don't look directly at I can right. see shadows of the angels are present. Because yes. he inhabits the praises of his people. That's right. He inhabits the praises of his people. It was asked, where is everybody at? I'll guarantee you, the Lord's presence shows up there in its fullness. We won't have to let anybody know about it. He will draw all men. That's who he's looking for, is hungry people. He's not looking for people that just want to taste. They want the people that want to sit at the banqueting table and eat and fellowship in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you brought your cell phone with you tonight, just a reminder to turn on the volume off or <coughs> turn them off themselves. All right, let's speak the word tonight. And I guess I do want to announce before we go to the word tonight, we are having service on Sunday. As normally scheduled, 10 a.m. Roberto and I will be here doing our best to hold down the fort. Will Mike take the trip? And James. And James. James will be here. And Peter. You're going to be here, Peter? Oh, awesome. Well, come and just see what happens. Yeah. Gang's going to be mostly here. Yeah. All right. Praise the Lord. Who needs a CD? We'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, bring a tambourine, harmonica, whatever you got. We'll just see what happens. Come on in. <laughs> All right, let's speak the word tonight. 
Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Yes, Lord. I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons. I speak in new tongues. I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Uh, Ron, do you want to come take the offering for us tonight, please?
God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your gift. Gift of God life. Eternal life. Thank you, Lord. For the most precious gift. Hallelujah, Lord. And thank you that because of that gift, we are able to give. Lord, we just want to bless you tonight for your exceeding greatness, for your great love. Lord, that even at this time of year when so many people miss the true meaning of the season and yet hearts are still touched, lives are still moved with compassion and with a sense of giving and love that even if they don't know it, it comes from you. And Lord, we just pray that during this season, celebrating your birth, your manifestation in humanity, that Lord, many, many people will come to know you and to trust in you and to be changed and transformed by you. Make that your continuing gift again during this season, Lord. We ask it and know that it is your will, Lord, so that we have our petition in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you, Suzanne, for opening. Thank you, everybody, for sharing your testimonies and prayer requests. Thank you, Mike, and the whole worship team. Praise the Lord. Amen. And yes, we are having a regular service Sunday. And uh, I want to uh, share some things. Uh, it'll be a you know, Christmas message as close to any theme I ever get. But uh, I do have something in mind. And, and I'm going to be relatively brief because I understand it is Christmas and everybody has family and all that. But, but we still want to, after all, it is the Lord's Day. You know, it's not just the Lord's Day, but it is the Lord's Day. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I know we celebrate that in our hearts and our lives every day of the year, but I think it's only fitting that we especially pay attention to this one day out of the year when we do honor the manifestation of God in flesh and what that means to each one of us individually and to the entire earth collectively. So praise the Lord. We're looking forward to that and looking forward to seeing all of you that can be here. Sunday morning, praise God. And I want to mention one other thing before I go to the Word tonight, that some uh, generous benefactor, anonymous, left uh, several uh, grocery bags of uh, canned goods and some other miscellaneous uh, food items on the front step, or the side step of the church. And when I got here, Roberto and I uh, took them downstairs. So anybody that has need, uh, personally, or if you know somebody who does, please help yourself to them tonight. Uh, whatever is not used up, we'll, we'll, we'll find somebody to take it. But I just soon started right here uh, with the church. And I know that this time of the year, we're all, we have expenditures that we don't have at other times. And maybe this would be a little something to help uh, some of you out. Or maybe you have a neighbor or a family member or someone else that you know that's uh, struggling. These are not high ticket items, but there's different soups and there's some, uh, there's just some odds and ends of things that everybody can use and everybody does use. So uh, it'd be great if you, if you have seeds, help yourself to it. If you know somebody that does, please take it and, and pass it on to someone else and, so that uh, nobody's going hungry that, that we don't, you know? Maybe it won't be a turkey, but this might provide another meal so that they can get a turkey or a, a you know, chicken or whatever, you know? So, Please, uh, after church, go down, go through it. If there's anything that uh, you can use or know that somebody could use, please help yourself to it. And may God bless the anonymous giver, Amen. hallelujah, that uh, made this possible. So we just want to pass that right along to, to the next party. Amen. So, all right, praise the Lord. Let's, uh, I, I'd like to begin in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, Roberto. 
Ephesians 1 and verse 4. Again, thanks everybody for being here. The weather is a little bit closer to human kind of <laughs> life. Wow. So, man, Sunday was just really weird, but uh, thank the Lord we're past that. In fact, we're talking about this coming Sunday, maybe 50 degrees and rain. What kind of weird is that? You know, seven days going like 75 degrees and temperature change. If we're not all sick, I mean, it'll be the Lord for sure, praise God. God is good. Amen. So according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Uh, chapter 2, verse 4. Now, still in Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. And Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at this time of the year, uh, you know, we always think about the Christmas story and the birth of Christ, and that's well and good and only right that we should. But what he brought to this earth is love. God is love. And it was manifest in the person of Jesus Christ. So, you know, in the middle of our messy, unpredictable, hard to understand lives, Jesus is all about love. He loves us in and through it all right to the very end. John 13, verse 1. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come and that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And that's true of each and every one of us. He's talking about the disciples here specifically, but it's true of all of us. He loves us all the way to the end of this life and into the next. Because, in fact, we are already eternal beings. We already have God life in us, so we're not going to die. This flesh may have to go another way, but we're, we've done all the dying we're going to do. You know, We were crucified with Christ, and now we live. It's not us that lives, but Christ in us. He, yeah. he is our life. Amen. So we can talk about the problems. We can talk about the fears, the uncertainties and the good news, and how to walk through all of it. But we need to keep love over, under, and through it all. Because that's the real message that Jesus has brought. Love is the centerpiece of Jesus' message and everything that he taught and in every interaction that he had with other people. It was love. Love was how he thought. Love was how he operated. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And keep in mind, Jesus is the exact manifestation or replication of God. And we know that God is love. So it's only fitting and right that Jesus would be love. That his whole message and his whole operating uh, persona would be love. And to love others and to sh show that love to others. Amen? So now abide in faith, hope, Charity, which translates love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Think about that. We, we've had plenty of messages, and, and I've taught on it, and we all know. Faith is critical to a Christian. Hope is critical, because you have to hope when there is no hope. That translates to faith. And then there's love. But he says, the greatest of these is love. Greater than our faith, greater than our hope in what God will do, is love. That's pretty profound. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 again. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Be followers of God as dear children. And then 
he says, walk in love. Because God is love. If we're going to follow God, we have to be able to love. Or we're not following God. Amen? Yeah. Love is, I might not remember that old song, love is everywhere. Yeah. But love is everywhere. When you look at the Bible, love is all throughout the Bible. Love is the greatest walk in love, he said. Love is the greatest walk in it. God is the God of our lives. No one would dispute that, would you? That's right. But God is love. Yes. First John chapter 4 and verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. <laughs> Think about it. Love is. Now, you know, love can't be understood just by defining it. It doesn't work. You can tr it's like trying to explain a color to a blind person. Right. Because it's an emotion. It's, it's so many things besides just defining a word. Now, you know, the, the definition of it can be part of it, but true love, like God, because God is love, is something that has to be experienced. Love is what unites everything. Yes. Love is what makes sense of everything. The truth is, we may be worse off than we think, but the good news is, better than we can imagine. Yeah. Praise the Lord. The good news is even though we may be better, worse than, than we think we are, the good news is greater than anything we could ever imagine. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2 again. Be therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet and smelling savor. Love each other. Since love comes from God, you say, how, do you, how can you know God? God's invisible. No one's ever seen him. The scripture's trying to tell us something here, that if we can love each other, since love comes from God, we can know God through that very act. We can know God through loving one another. Praise the Lord. Amen. In fact, you may get to know God better in that act than in anything else you could do. Mm -hmm. Because it is a manifestation of the one quality that God identifies himself with. That he is love. Yeah. He has all kinds of power. He has omnipotent. He's, you know, uh, all powerful. He, he's omnipresent. He's, but he is love. Yes. First John chapter four, verse eight again. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. So just like a lack of love is a sign that we don't know God, Look at verse 9. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. So just like a lack of love is a sign that we don't know God, then loving is a sign that we do know God, mm -hmm. that we have experienced something of God. We know God loves us like this. Amen? Because he declares it over and over and over. Because he sent his son, his only begotten son, Jesus, not only to die for us, but to live with us, to love us, so that we could learn how to live and love in the same way. Mm -hmm. See, we've made, religion has made this about all of our good behavior. When that isn't the message of the scripture. The message of the scripture is that we love one another. That will reveal God to people. Right, right. And you can't love people and be cruel. Right. And do the harmful, hurtful things that 
that so many of us have done and, and do from time to time out of our own selfishness or, or misunderstandings or whatever. But see, love overcomes all of that. Love will keep you from being cruel and evil and mean and, uh, and all those ugly things. Amen? So look at verse 11 now, if you can. And this is what I'm talking about Christmas. That, that, I'm not saying there aren't still thieves out there stealing packages off of people's front porches and, and bad things are happening. But a lot of the nominal people, somehow they get lifted at this time. And you see love. You experience love. Just like what Tim's talking about. So let me let, just go ahead and go in front. And, you know, let me pay for your stuff. There's just there's something that rises up in the human heart that wants to love at this time of the year. Amen. If they're at all human, you know. And so, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Praise the Lord. That's one reason we ought to love each other. You know, we might not be able to see God, but we can't miss the evidence of God's love when we love each other. Hmm. Amen. That's what the world needs. That's what they need to see. Yes. You can talk to them about God. You can give them tracts. You can tell them how, you know, horrible hell will be and all that kind of stuff. But what they need is love. Yeah. Psalms 139, and you don't have to go there. It's a, I'm not going to read that whole chapter, but most of you know it. You may not know the 139, but you know the, the verses, and it's about David talking about how that God knew him in his mother's womb, yes. and he had a plan for his life, and he already knew everything about him. He, he knew what he would be when he grew up. He knew what he would be as an adult, as a man, as a boy, all that. God knew us before we were born, and he had a plan for each one of us before we were born. In fact, the scripture says, we read at the very beginning, that before the foundation of the world, we were already chosen in Christ. We were already in Christ in the mind of God back then. Before any of our ancestors were even on this planet, God already had a plan for our life. He already knew us individually, and he already knew the plan and the purpose that he had for each of our lives. Yes. Well, love comes from God. Uh -huh. And when we love, we're showing each other we've had a taste of what God is like. Amen? Amen? That's what people want. That's what people need. We feel that when we're together. We may not identify as that particular thing, but that's part of what we're feeling. We're feeling the love of God because we're having compassion for one another. We're sharing our personal issues and struggles and, and wants and desires and, and fears. And we're sympathetic. We, we have compassion. We share love. And what do we feel? We feel the presence of God. Yes. Because God is love. Wherever there is love, God is being manifested, whether the people understand it or not. Mm -hmm. But just like Mike was talking about, they feel, this guy cares. He doesn't know me. He doesn't know my wife. But for some reason, he seems to care about us. That's love. Mm -hmm. Because that's how God feels. Yeah. When we love preemptively, we're giving the world, we're giving strangers, we're giving neighbors, we're giving enemies, we're giving everybody a picture of God. So love is meant to be experienced. And love supreme, God love, isn't just an idea or a concept or a once in a year kind of behavioral uh, issue. Supreme love is real and it's lived in each and every one of us. Amen. So if you will, go to Ephesians chapter 4, Roberto, verses 15 and 16. Ephesians 4, verses 15 and 16. Speaking the truth in love, we may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now, Ephesians 5, verse 2 again. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling 
See, I'm not going to speak for anybody else here. But I don't deserve this. Not one bit. I haven't earned it. I'm not entitled to it. I haven't done anything to help my case. In fact, I've done many, many things to hurt it. Right. But God loves me anyway. Thank you, Lord. Not because I'm lovable, but because God is love. God loved me. And God came up with a plan to rescue me, even though it would cost him everything. Me. He rescued me. That guy who doesn't deserve love in the first place. See, that's what makes Christmas an everyday thing. Yes. If we could think that way, if we could understand it that way. Luke chapter 15, verse 20. Y'all know this parable of the prodigal son. He rose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion <laughs> and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but I've read this so many times over the years. But the father's response in that parable makes absolutely zero, zilch, nada, no sense. Zero. Unless God is who God says he is. Yes. Mm. Right. On our own, we can't love like that. Right. But God can. Uh -huh. And in and through us, he will. Oh, Amen. indeed. I think that's why, one of the reasons why we, you know, we don't know when Jesus was born. There's a dispute about all of it. And I don't really care. If it was important, God would have made it clear to us. We celebrate this day. Right. But it's, it's, a, it's just a reminder. It's, always, it's the thing to bring us back to the core, to the, to the, the simplicity of the gospel. Mm -hmm. That it's love for God, God's love for us, and then our love one for another. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, God knows the path that he's prepared for you to walk. Not to earn his love. That's not what the path is for. But to express it, to experience it, and then to be able to express it to others. That's the path. That's the plan. That's the purpose. Revelation 21 verse 23. Revelation chapter 21 verse, 20, verse 23. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did light it. Mm -hmm. And the Lamb yeah. is the light thereof. Amen. Yeah. Now look at Luke chapter 1, verses 78 and 79. Luke 1, verses 78 and 79. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness yes. and in the shadow of death yes. to guide our feet yes. in the way of peace. Hallelujah. Somebody said, you know, a day without sunshine is like night. <laughs> yes, it is. Lord. He brought us out of night. He brought us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Praise the Lord. Revelation 21, and 20, verse 23. Revelation chapter 21, verse 23. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. See, God's light, God's love, is shining on you, and therefore through you. So then, you are the light of the world. That light is love. It's the love of God. He's told us that. That's what brought him into this earth. For God so loved that he sent light. That 
light is the glory of God. It's the love of God. Last scripture, Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 and 16. 14 through 16, excuse me. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. <laughs> Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, the works that God put, planned for you, <laughs> and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. See your love, <laughs> and they'll see God. Glory. And give him glory. Tasted the love. Yes. And it's good. Hallelujah. We've experienced God. Uh -huh. yes. If that love experience is light, then we have to reflect it. Glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand clap. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. There's never an easier time to do that than right now. Because uh -huh. most people are either in, already in a pretty good mood or they're extremely depressed. So in either case, one on the one hand is open to love. The one on the other hand is desperate for love. And it may just be the difference between Christmas just being another depressing day for someone or being a revelation of God. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Please go down and take uh, some of this the food that's been left here and uh, use it or share it with somebody else, whatever, but please take it. Someone meant it. And I'm thinking that someone was God. He just moved on somebody else's heart to do it, so.